Okay, so I'm going to start the meeting. Uh, public comments? Do you all just want to have your spot on the agenda? Okay. In that case, uh, if everyone could please read the minutes from the last two meetings that we have here, the 5th and the 19th. capacity and priorities for tree planting and aftercare it says maximum trees to plant 200 to 250 maximum trees to water 300 to 350 I just don't remember us coming up with that number three to 350 that was a quick question to rich I asked today <laughs> well that, that's the reality of it I know but minutes are supposed to reflect what was said at a meeting uh, I, I get that yeah. so, um, so anyway, and, 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 and I just want to add that in in the world that I've been in, I've been to a lot of, a lot, of a lot of board meetings. Uh, often the minutes are uh, made to reflect what uh, people in the community think that they should say, and then it's approved by everybody that sort of They're sort of the record of the number of the private world are meant to reflect uh, the position of the board. And, and so I'm just not sure that. that if, okay, I'm not so sure I, think, I think we're talking about two different things. If a person said something, and what the minutes say is not what they believe that they said, ah, then they can clarify it. Exactly. But if there's new information added to the minutes, that's I'll that's just, just remove it. I'll just remove yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, because I, I just as a point, I'm just saying that if the person who said it thinks that's what they would have said or would like. No, to say that's it. not. That's that's actually not part of Robert's rules. I'm it's not, not sure. what it, I am. I'm I'm Probably. sure about that. Yeah, it's come up in other commission meetings I've right. been in where um, where someone said, well, what I really meant to say or what I wanted to say, and the, the chair you know, corrected and said, well, what the minutes do is they reflect what was said. And if you would like to, um, in this meeting, clarify what you say, that can be part of the minutes for that meeting. So anyway, that's... That's Robert's rule. Is that your understanding? That's right. oh, yeah, Robert's rule slash mass law. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Um, and and the three three to three fifty, Rich. I'm not trying to quibble. Um, I, I just yeah, the reason why there, I, is, there is no quibbling because the trees will get watered no matter how many there are. And right. That's okay. how it is. All right. Well. Um, I'm not gonna let them die. I can tell you that. Definitely. And um, it, I mean, it could be even upward higher than that, right? Because if we plant up to two hundred fifty this year, and we have like one hundred fifty from last year, then we could be planting four hundred yeah, trees. More than. That's right. Like slogan on the water truck, right? But, but stencil then, not going to allow I don't want to get into the content. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But just in terms of the number of trees, that they, 
because we water the water yeah. will be planted in the fall, so rich will be carrying it through the summer. Okay, all right. A lot of them, an awful lot of them. All right. I'm just looking for a motion at this point. Motion. Move. You have to move. Well, minutes of the uh, uh, April 5th of April. April. Any objections to that? No. Okay, we'll consider that a unanimous vote. Okay, so the April 19th, we have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I'll abstain. Okay. All righty. Um, I, I don't think I have much of a chair report. Um, Todd, I don't know. If um, okay, so yeah, you didn't mention it. So um, I was absent, actually it was, it was the day before I made my city council presentation. So the day after you guys last met, I went to city council. Um, I uh, both heard the mayor give of the Arbor Day proclamation, and then I gave a maybe 10 minute update to the city council on the work we're doing. It was not unlike the article that I wrote for the public. And I think it was very well received. I got a lot of um, positive feedback after the meeting was over. I stayed for the whole meeting because I was there for other reasons as well. Um, so mission accomplished there. And then also the Gazette article I wrote um, also got a lot of positive feedback about it. People really appreciated hearing, you know, seeing the big picture and, and seeing the progress over time. I think those are my only reports. And Mass Live picked up the uh, tree whip distribution, right? Mm. Yes. Great. Great. Okay. I don't know if anyone picked up the planting. Rich, do you see anyone on the? No. I don't see the, no, unfortunately not. Okay, good. And um, uh, 
Yeah. You know, we can use a second now to say, did all the WIPs get distributed or? No? Okay. So we'll, we can say that a little bit later for your, your uh, update too. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to mention. Uh, Todd and I met in the, um, in the time between meetings. Um, and we we'll, haven't had a chance to talk to you about that, Rich, yet, but we had some thoughts. And I think that's about it on my end. So, Rich, you're up. Before Rich gets going, I just want to note this is the start of our third year. All right. Because we started in May of 2015. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So. Arbor Day, we gave away 402 whips between the two days. Uh, the remaining balance of the whips I gave to Rob today, and Rob is going to try to get them in at the community gardens to utilize them for future, some type of tree giveaway. Did we start with 400? So we started with 500 altogether. 500, yeah. 500 altogether. Um, we, the remaining trees we had left were mainly oaks and um, uh, sweet gums. Uh, sweet gums. Mm. All the red buds wine, all the lilacs wine. A lot of people took oaks, but they're big. Some people don't really want a big tree. They want something that's. What kind of oaks are they? Those white oaks. Oh. So they get like pretty huge. You know, 100 feet if they're in the right location. Mm. Uh, we have a whole heck of a lot. Um, the awarded bidder for the trees that we're going to be purchasing for, uh, I guess it'll be FY17, is going to be Amherst Nursery. They were the only complete bid that I received back. Uh, 140 trees, roughly about $19,000. That's what that's going to cost. So, um, I'm in the process of getting John from Amherst to sign a contract so I can get the mayor to sign it. But John is going to hold on to the trees for us. Um, where we Curious, where else did you send out? Um, Bigelow, Northeast. I only have to do two. There's no one that does the grow back method. So as soon as you put grow back method, preferred method of uh, propagation, they just send an open back. Mm -hmm. So. And they're actually easier, to, they're just really easy to handle all the way around from the delivery aspect, from us moving them to where they have to be, to volunteers planning them. I just, I, I, it's, it's a, a win-win. Yeah, on, on that, I could just note that we did plant with the DPW five Cleopas to have a fairly good side group ball. It all went really well, but there were five big DPW guys and five or eight volunteers, and it took us all morning. And then, uh, then same week I went out and with one guy planted four trees in one you know, myself. It just showed the, because I love, I like planting those things. That was beautiful. We did great job. How long does it take a whip to catch up to a root ball size tree? How long does it take? Yeah. Not, not, it depends on the tree species, but not, not long. They grow very fast. Like a young. couple of years? Yeah, it's a tree like a locust and a root ball is probably like five years old. Mm -hmm. You know, but the way that they dig them and everything, they often have very little rootstock, mm -hmm. so they can have real transplant shock. I mean, I, I don't want to speak to these particular ones, but I last year bought a, um, I, I bought a, a Florida dogwood at Wenzix, and it had a huge, huge uh, ball. And I took it home and I removed it from its, you know, cage, and there was almost no rootstock, and it didn't thrive. Oh. Uh, we're going to take the rest of the delivery of the 2016 order uh, either Friday or on Monday from Amherst Nursery. So that'll complete the last year's order we'll have in our inventory and then we're going to be using a lot of those trees on South Street. So it's kind of worked out and then I guess it's all weather dependent on how, how far we go on South Street and how much stock we use, but we'll filter in the rest of the stock after the contract's been signed and the money's been covered. Um, the other thing too is that the money is that is uh, allocated here for tree planting is going to be now put in the capital part of our budget, but it's not in the capital part of the budget where we actually have to go in front of capital improvements and ask for requests. It's in, under what they call OOM, other than ordinary maintenance, which we can actually roll that money over now instead of giving it back. You mean this year's? No. no. That's okay. wait for FY18, which starts in July. 
So if we don't expend the forty thousand dollars next fiscal year, it'll sit there, right. stay in that account, and then another forty thousand. Or if we request more for FY nineteen, we'll sit in that line item at our disposal. So that's a good thing because it gives us a little more buying power for other projects. You know, instead of actually giving it back every year and having to chase our chase things around to try to buy enough trees to expend the money and, and not, you know, I'm not saying we're not expending it prudently, but we're always in a rush, I think, to spend it because we have it. And instead, we it'll give us a little more, with some more project work and some more prior planning, I think we'll be able to expend the money more efficiently or judiciously, however you want to say it. Yeah, I, I just add trees are, are something of a, a long cycle. I mean, yeah, they are. They're not. It's not like buying a ton of black top and throwing it in a bottle and walking away. Right. Uh -huh. It's not a long cycle. So it's good that your money will get longer. <clears throat> um, I did have a thought because um, I, I, I don't want to interrupt your report, so I can save this. Uh, I, you know what? I'll just, I'll just save my thought for um, when we talk about FY18 priorities. Sure. Uh, so Tree Keeper, the software that we have, uh, we're going to be, we are getting a free update. Tree Keeper is updated to a new version called Tree Keeper 8. Um, it was rolled out last Friday. I'm actually uh, going to be doing some online training uh, tomorrow and the following week as well to continue when they deliver it. So it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully they've uh, updated the GIS map a little bit. The GIS map lacks a lot in my opinion compared to our GIS system, but that's another story. Um, I'm close to finalizing um, my approval of the cutting plan of the public shade trees at 83 Grove Street in Leeds, or Grove Avenue, I mean. Um, I, we had a public shade tree hearing uh, April 12th, which was noted in your minutes that actually there was no objection after some communication with one of the residents that was potentially going to object. So I'm, I just actually got the email today with the final revisions of the tree planting material, the labor and the design work that this gentleman's put into it. Plus he's also indicated that he's not going to cut as many public shade trees as he originally thought. So uh, I think it's a I think it's a win-win situation because where he's actually going to be putting his driveway in, all the trees that are being removed there are all volunteers. You really can't be very difficult to plant a tree in that location on purpose. It's it's very rocky and it's rock and it's very it's very hilly. So he is actually going to put plantings within the public right of way and within the 20 foot setback to uh, mitigate for the loss of the trees that he's going to remove. So that's going to work out. And that's really about well all I have. Uh, South Street obviously is on the agenda, so. Actually, I'm not sure it is on the agenda. Is it not? No, go ahead. Okay. So, tentatively, so once we get all this, uh, Rob and I have walked as long as Rob and uh, the volunteers and insurance company have walked over on South Street and staked it. And we big saved 67. 67 locations altogether. All on the, on the water side, on the underwater side. So we're tentatively, we would like to tentatively have a mass planting on May 20th which is a Saturday. Our goal is to plant the, the, at least 30 trees, a minimum of 30 trees in one day. This um, is the DPW doing it? DPW Not and volunteers. volunteers com combination too. project, yeah. Right. So we're looking probably for maybe 15 to 20 volunteers possibly, and about five to six public works support staff. Um, and are these are gonna be the Amherst Nursery grow bag trees? Yep. Uh, yes, I think right one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there might be a, there it might be a few, mostly. Might yeah. be a few B and B's. Okay. Um, there are some trees that are being delivered next week that might be. be all. And because it's going to be such a large project, we thought about making a rain date, which would be May 27th, which is the following Saturday, just in case. I mean, a pouring rain. I mean, if it's fizzling out, it'd be fine. It's perfect, but. That way there we try to get the bulk of the trees that we have in the ground so they're not hanging around in open pen over the summer. And then there's other plantings that we have that are um, where you're marked for setback plantings last year that we have to honor. Um, and then whatever trees that we actually get from the new water that we get that are in South Street, we'll probably try to plant those, I think, in the fall. 
Mm -hmm. if, there, if they arrive in time, we could mix them in with the... That, that is a possibility, but I don't think they'll arrive in time because the way the highest level get the contract and job. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant the, the trees that are coming over yeah. next week. Not, not the new order, but some of the trees that... Yeah. that, that well, I hope you take everything, so whatever we have, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try right. to get in the ground. Right. Okay, and is this a case of Tree Northampton doing all the volunteer organizing, or, or are you looking for the Tree Commission to also support I, I, Well, I mean, I'm obviously looking for the Tree Commission to support, obviously, but I think the Tree Northampton, unless I'm incorrect, is... And we're happy to we're, we're, they're, reach they're on, out they're on and... The volunteer. We can kind of touch base on this a little bit at the mm -hmm. uh, Arbor Day Whip giveaway mm -hmm. to see if they could garner enough support yeah. for having enough volunteers for that one day. And one of the reasons that we want to do this as a joint effort is because of the the proximity of the tree belt in relation to how close it is to the edge of the road and mm -hmm. how fast people drive. Yeah. After walking South Street multiple times, which I've done a lot, um, it's just, even with my vest on and my truck parked with the lights on, people are still going 45 miles an hour. Can you cone where? We're, we are going to cone and we're going to have protection zones with vehicles and, mm -hmm. and that way there will be, be kind of a moving project down the street. Mm -hmm. But at least uh, it'll be Motorists will be aware of it, and I'll put a blast out on our uh, our uh, blog, and then I'll have the mayor put something on Facebook. Okay, I can also alert my neighborhood. Yeah, so they just are aware of folks being there. Saturday morning is kind of a busy morning on South Street, but I mean it's probably not any busier than a, a rush hour day. Okay. But the rain dates. The uh, isn't that the art festival for the fair That I don't know. That shouldn't interfere though. I mean, it's far I mean, enough it's, away. It's Memorial Day weekend, so we may some people might be going away doing something. Okay. So we may not have as many volunteers possibly, but I don't anticipate having an issue with DPW staff. Okay. Could I just have a quick show of hands of people that would be interested in being a part of that? I'm interested. I'm oh, okay. I might be able to do a half a day. I think I have a workshop for part of that day. Which are we talking about the 20th? The 20th. Yes. Okay. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to be away probably on the 27th. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm only the 20th. Um, it's my son's Shakespeare performance. I'm available the 27th. Okay. But I, I feel pretty confident that we can get volunteers for that. And, and you're starting from downtown, working your way out? Yes, that, you yeah, know. from Dewey Court going downtown. Okay. okay. So, well, actually, that would be the preferred way to do it, but because we're working against the traffic. That's the only problem. So if we are using watering trucks and we're using a truck that has mulch on it, the truck has to back up constantly, oh. which is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So but we wouldn't start all the way at the opposite end. Maybe start in the middle. Or would we? Uh, you probably would you want to work with traffic. And right. then, so we have, we have to kind of look at that, I think, depending upon what. Right. Well, maybe we could go like five tree back. Try you five could. trees back and then do five you trees could. and then move further. I around. mean, it's not difficult to swing things around. It's just if you're, it makes, mm -hmm. you know, we could also drive up the wrong side of the road. Well, well, or like 30 trees right. back and then within a day go forward and end up at Dewey Court. Why did you want to start at that close end? At Dewey Court? Yeah. Uh, just because that, that was the way that we had, our original vision was actually planting trees from the center of Northampton and working our way outward. Yeah. Until so you run out. Yeah, well, until we run out of either trees or real estate. One. Or volunteer homes. <laughs> volunteer arms. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, operationally, traffic-wise, it's better to start right. farther down and work our way in. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can do it, but we can figure it out. We're not too worried about it. Okay. Or if you, so meet, or if you meet at the, uh, the gym, uh, the Cancer Connection store, whatever, you yep. have everyone can park there and you can work down. Yeah. So that's kind of the tentative, the tentative plan. It's kind of put out some information. I know it's kind of short notice because it's already the third, but I don't think we'll, I think we'll have enough. And is there any thought of um, of doing a thematic planting the way that Jen and I sat down and considered? Yes, Rob, Rob and I actually, we have a map that I had printed out from the old, when they actually did all the, um, the rumble strip and they did all the bike lanes and everything. We actually really have, you know, some of the engineering department actually made us some maps. So we actually have a working map. Are we going to be able to see that before it happens? Um, when's the next meeting? Mean, 17th. Uh, but that wouldn't really give us time to react to it in the beginning. I mean, I just think that because that's yeah. something that the, the commission has given some thought to, 
that it would be nice to be able to see what the plan is. Well, if we can get a doctor help, I might be able to have it scanned and sent to you. Okay. So if we can, Rob and I are There'll be an XL of it in any case. And there is an XL of each site. Do you want to just verbally tell us, like, it, it, what you're thinking in terms of, like, is it going to be like a, you know, ABC, ABC, or is it going to be uh, all this block gets one kind, all this block gets another? I, I, I could speak to that briefly. Yeah. So, uh, starting at Dewey, there are some uh, bigger opportunities for bigger trees that mm -hmm. are in the wire, and then I'm just going to go out from there. And uh, then as you go out, there are some very poor sites that are relatively small on that end. And so each site, with the help of all the three American folks that are sitting here, uh, we looked at each site and rated it from one to three as the quality of site, three being the highest in quality. And then the, uh, we took the stock that seemed appropriate and put the toughest trees, the most drought resistant, salt resistant ones, in, uh, in the toughest sites. And then the, uh, so working sort of from uh, crab apples at Japanese uh, tree logs up to Winter King Hawthorne, which the Winter King Hawthorns will go in the better sites. Uh, they're tough, but I don't think they're indestructible. And, uh, so they'll go in clumps according to the, in other words, as we look at it and we see uh, clumps of better sites, which are really in the middle. In other words, at the tail end, up near the, the far end, they're terrible and small. And they're terrible and small on both ends. So quite wide and further from the travel line in the middle. And so it, towards the middle, they'll, they'll tend to be more wind king hawthorns, and towards the ends, more tree lilac and, and apple. And those will be um, in clumps. Now, the, the other element of it is that there, I think that's about 45 trees, and then there are about 15, so the numbers don't quite add up because they're not final. Either. There are about 15 setbacks, so in that, there'll be another whole set of species going along the road. Um, on the same side of the street? Yes. So you identified 15 households that wanted setbacks? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, yes, basically. Did you, uh, who, did All you guys do that? These three folks. There have been a number of outings. Alicia. Mm -hmm. Alicia too. As well. Mm -hmm. um, with Rob and two of us went out, looked at the soil a little bit and in some different sites and just walked the street. Me and and people. Yeah documented, you know, how big the, the sites were and rated them one to three to um, identify where the best sites were and for the sites that didn't look as promising. And um, well, to back up a little bit, we started with my tree keeper looking at the vacancies. Mm -hmm. And then as we went, we had the door hangers for the setback trees and we talked to people and read to people we knew and try to get the word out. That's that, a really good number. That the trees and get the, the message that bigger trees could be planted and they'd have a much better rate of survival if we could, um, if people were interested in the setbacks. Try to get that message through to everybody. And there are quite a few people who want one or two. Probably 10 have stakes. If you go along, you can actually see them in the yard. And another five people want them. They're emailing with us. But uh, just note that people never, almost never sign up until they know exactly what tree they would get. Species, they want to know, they're very low. Yep. Okay, good. So are there big, are those the three species that you talked about? The hawthorn, the apple, and the? Right, and thrown in there, there where there's room in some of those small spaces, there are a couple of um, street keeper honey locusts. They're oh. kind of scaled down honey locusts mm -hmm. so that they can fit into a relatively small spot. Okay. Uh, but not with wires overhead, though there is a honey locust that can fit under wire now. That I don't have my I don't know where it is, but somewhere out there. So those setback trees, that's not part of the whole same planting operation that day. Is that a different a different thing? That's a different that, thing. That would be that's done by volunteers. Oh. The, the setbacks. Yeah. 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 People could more than but the separate to this event that you're ordering. That's yeah. correct, yeah. Those okay. were those were just I mean this is again not the high impact, high profile fact that there's a gazillion stakes out there, people are like, well, what's going on? I, mean, I don't know how many calls. I've got a few calls, I've got a few emails. I had one person call and complain about the fact that there's too many stakes in the curb and they're all going to get hit and so on and so forth. And, and, and some stakes have been probably pulled out here and there. You know, it's, 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 they're, it's, they're, all, they're all big stakes. So, you know, in reality, yeah. you can, 
So you got 69 total sites really all together, and you got another 15 on top of that. So that's oh, oh no, I'm sorry, they're in there. They're in there. Oh, they are. In yeah. There? Okay, sorry. So the 69 sites, including, yep. I just got this today. So setbacks, setbacks and the tree belt. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any other comment about the design? There'll be a few sweet guns down at Dewey Court. Is that? Yeah, so, yeah. so there's no species that so, have been mentioned. So those sweet gums, which will be on Dewey Court, which is the corner of Old South and the South, uh, will be delivered probably in, some, in the fall. So so not every, it's not going to be like, all oh, just, we're, you know, we're done, and we'll be back in the fall. And then there'll be more setbacks in the fall because people are drinking. And, okay. and then we'll move things on the other side of South Street around in the fall as well. So we're yeah. gonna, hopefully, if we. Hopefully we'll be done, I would hope. That would be the yeah, I think optimum goal would be done with South Street this year and be done with one project and be finished with it. And then the commission needs to look at what project you'd like to do for the following year so we can actually start to get mm -hmm. the tree Yes, we can, we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm conscious of the fact that we've gone over the tree warden report. So if anyone has no more comments about um, the, <coughs> um, the design of South Street, I think it sounds thoughtful. I think that it's great that you're really considering the sites very individually and carefully. You know, in a perfect world, I'd love to see a pattern, um, but it's a really imperfect area you're working on underneath the, the, the um, wire with varying widths of the tree belt. And so I, I totally get that, and I think that you've done a great job. And there will be groups of three, four, something like that, yeah, they will repeat. Okay. And then, uh, and then vary and then repeat. But, I see. But, um, but the, the change over will be simulated by change of conditions. Yes. Yeah. That makes more sense to me. Okay. All right. Let's do a very, very brief Arbor Day debrief so we can catch up a little bit on our last time. It's mostly you, Rich, but Arbor other people can Arbor chime in too. Well, well, there was a wonderful planting um, on the corner of Market yeah, awesome. and Holly. It was great. I um, went and took pictures and got photo releases from from the participants, the volunteers from the Environmental Club. They were wonderful, and hopefully maybe they would be interested in future projects. So um, it was it was really positive. There were big trees. And the volunteers were really inspired and hardworking. Good experience for them, I think, and your crew. We're yeah, wonderful. I, mean, uh, well, I, I think all together we probably spent a day, it was a day worth of preparation um, because the site, the soil, the site was really not very good. We decided, and compact, we decided to dig, pre dig mm -hmm. the, the holes to a certain depth. Um, and then we did that and we had to go get some compost and we had to get supplies and things of that nature and then we actually brought the trees down there and just left the trees right next to where the holes were going to be and the following day when the volunteers showed up we just basically unraveled everything and set the holes to the right depth and we had the composting material in the truck, we had the water rig set up in the other truck and we had the park mulch and the water bags and within uh, I'd say between 8 and 11, 30 we had five trees put in the ground with, uh, I don't know how many volunteers showed up. I think eventually it was like five altogether. Yeah, yeah. it was also a slow start. But. The, um, there were essentially two teams. Yeah. So with the DPW helping both teams, with um, Rich leading a team and Rob leading a team, getting the whole stuff, teaching them the correct method for the placement of the tree and the angles of the tree, and getting them filled back in properly. Right. Right. Fresh volunteers, they were interested in learning. Right. Then the um, Friday and Saturday, DPW set up. Great workers there who love the trees and care about the trees. And we had volunteers throughout. We had at least one, usually two or even three trees. Or six. Tree, well, tree North Hampton people plus the other volunteers that we had come in. Yeah. It we was a it. scene. We had a really good time. It was a lot of fun. And, um, I almost bought a half of 50 bucks. <laughs> they got a, they have a picture of that, you know, now in the office that we put that hat on. So. What's it say? It's Susan's hat. 
I came with a hat and he offered to buy it, so I said 50 bucks, and then I said, oh, I only paid 20. And then I decided to wear it. It's like a sombrero, it's perfect. Wow. Classic. We had a good day. Who knew? Yeah, it was a, yeah we had a lot of... Yeah, Amish um, workers hat? <laughs> is that like an Amish workers hat? No, uh, it was just right. something, something, it was, it was a gracious lady hat, what can I say? Um, my brother was visiting before we headed down to DC and he came and got some trees and really appreciated it. Oh good. Yeah. We had Alicia made buttons yeah. that said volunteer, Trina came to volunteer and we had a banner and we had unfortunately at the first day because they got forgotten, but we had um, beautiful color printouts with the name of the tree and the species and pictures of the tree in different stages, the leaf close up, the mm -hmm. shape with different seasons, so that when people, that was really helpful because mm -hmm. yeah. to verbally say, this stick is going to be a beautiful shade tree, um, particularly for the gum tree that people are unfamiliar with, to have a picture to see, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has gorgeous fo foliage, mm -hmm. it was easier to sell them with those materials. Right. We had a coloring activity for kids with leaf identification on the back, and Volunteers were terrific. We had a good number of volunteers who had come previous year. Thank, thank you, Marilyn, for sharing those that schedule so that we had that those experienced volunteers. Everything goes better when people have done before. Have to them. Volunteers um, commented that there wasn't a lot of foot traffic, especially on the set, more so on the Saturday, in that location. So they headed out to the farmers market and milled through a couple times and tried to tell, spread the word, tell people about it to come up. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And well, we actually gave away a, a, the number of trees that we typically give away, right? 400. So in terms of actually, success. No, we gave more. We gave more because we actually gave, we had 500 last year, we had 400. We had about, um, Leftover. We had leftovers last year, but not because oh, people didn't okay. want the larger trees. Okay. People are taking the smaller. Uh -huh. I don't want a big tree. Right. Flowering okay. tree. So yeah, we, I, I threw lilacs in there because that, you know that's yeah, like, take, a li the take a lilac, take a big tree. You know, just do what you got to do. <laughs> but it, it's it's okay. it seems yeah. to work out, and if we're able yeah. to propagate yeah. at least half of those trees that we've got, mm -hmm. we, yeah. we can reuse them obviously in planting somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, are yeah. they in the ground already? Okay. It, it, it's today. I would love to have some more if I could. Okay, you could take them home? Yeah, and just propagate them on my own. Because right. I, I, I'm, I'm now on year four of um, whips that I propagated in the past and now putting them in the ground. Is this Saturday the Pride Parade? Yeah. This Saturday. Saturday. Do we have a float? No. You took your big truck with the tree sticking out of it, a big tree no. lilac sticking out of the back of the truck, rich okay. waving everyone. <laughs> like the Lorax. No. No. I could give them up. Could give them up. Saturday. I never thought about that. I never thought about that. Or just having a table to put out trees. But I think it's a little late for that. I mean, the NoHo Pride March plans tables and folks oh, yeah. like they're, way, way yeah, ahead of time. They're either a year ahead of time. Yeah. All right. Rich Street. Anything else about Arbor Day? Um, like lessons learned, not details of like how the day went, but actually like, oh, I wish I had, or. Let's do more of this next year. I actually would have to say that I think I like the fact that we planted trees on a different day. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that we actually did a, a tree planting in a, um, one location that had a high impact. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's much easier to coordinate than, and I, you know, I, love, I love playing at the schools and I love working with the kids and you know giving them some education and having them have a little buy in at a young age. It ties in with everything that we, you know, mm -hmm. ties in with everything that we can consistently talk about, um, which our government consistently tells us that it's not that it's true, but whatever that's the source. Um, we're here to say otherwise, but I think doing what we did is uh, was a lot easier than the, for our operations for us, and I think it had a much bigger. I mean, don't I think the schools had a big impact for the students. But I think now, you know, it's all of a sudden, it's like it's instant, instant tree. Yeah. It's like there was nothing there, all of a sudden now there's five trees there. Well, also you taught kids at an age where they can actually really 
do it now. They can actually really right. plant a tree. Whereas the age group we were working with before, I feel like it was a, a soft launch introduction, but yep. they're not really going to be able to plant a tree. No, no. So I think those are three really great um, observations, and, and I second all of them. One, that we do it on a different day, and I think Earth Day can always be a great day. Yeah. Um, I feel like lithium doesn't do enough on Earth Day, and this could be our always sort of like build up to Arbor Day, a little bit the way North, um, Amherst considers it Arbor Month. Mm -hmm. You know, we could just extend that. I loved that the lo one location with a big impact. I really noticed it when I was I'm driving down Bridge Street now, and I and I love the high school tie-in. Yeah. So I agree with all those things. Um, okay, anyone else? Um, really loved. Wish we'd done this differently. I think it was good when we. Pretty much all the time we had someone with an arborist background at the giveaway. Either Susan, Tony, we had um, Adam Maroney from Eversource. The, the only thing I'd like to see done differently next year is to have whoever shows up at 8 o'clock on Friday go around and collect all the handout material two or three days ahead so that that person is there right when the whips arrive and the paperwork is there. Yeah, I, I have to say I apologize. I, I guess I, I probably dropped the ball on that because my assumption was that you guys were going to bring it, but we may do with it. So well, we, we didn't even know what we were getting for trees. I understand that. Like I said, I dropped the ball. So I take responsibility. I'll, I'll bug you next year. I'll bug you more next year. I'll be less shy about That's bugging fine. you. So regarding your comments about the light foot traffic in front of City Hall, do we want to consider another location? I mean, because if if the tri if the farmers market is already around, should we consider like locating ourselves right near the farmers market? Yeah, we, we have investigated doing things at the farmers market before, and they have a policy that they don't allow tabling anymore because oh. of. Well, not I'm not talking about right inside the farmers market, but like right next to it, we could get a sidewalk permit, right, Rich? To, sure. to set up a table yeah. right near the farmer's market where you get all the same track, you're catching all the same people, but you're not within the market itself. I thought Friday was pretty busy. Friday was really good. In maybe just City Hall. maybe we should plan in getting info down to the farmer's what market. What about two sites? Well, that's another possibility. Logistically, that would be more challenging. But you said you have like tons of volunteers. So yeah, what about City Hall on Friday, because you had a lot of traffic, and then on Saturday get the permit for the sidewalk, the same day as the farmer's market. So two different locations, yeah. two different days. Well, people tend to beeline to the farmer's market on Saturdays. Yeah. Just a thought. Okay, well, we don't have to answer it now. No, I think it's worth investigating. I think okay. if we were to do that, we could also possibly increase mm -hmm. the amount of trees that we actually get away. Mm -hmm. And just divide the variety of them, actually, mm -hmm. possibly. See, I mean, believe it or not, Florence has a lot of foot traffic. And I always feel like Florence is left out of mm -hmm. reality of part of the city. Yeah. Well, it does have a lot of foot traffic. Um, the Wednesday farmer's market, you mean? There's that. You, 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 I, don't I don't know if it will I don't know if it started or not. But oh, maybe not. There was one guy out there today. At the farmer's oh, market? The farmer's market. One person? Yeah. Not quite. So it may not, it may not no. start until the beginning of May, so we might. What about the Tuesday market? Well, Tuesday market, like um, like the Saturday market, you can't you can't do anything within the market. Oh. Um, but you could, it's sort of right outside. Uh -huh. But that's not addressing Rich's issue of trying to get to Florence people. Right. right. The Florence people, I think, the transfer station. The transfer station is where it always used to be done. Oh, that's a great place. And it was, and you can table right out, you can table right out. Yeah. Right outside. And the that would be, so that's Saturday morning. You just there. have to be, I mean, uh, in some years when I used to volunteer there, we would be like inside the garage. Maybe it was on a rainy, rainy yeah, morning. You, so you, we had you, almost no. You really have to be right out there. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. Right. You can't get but to the left. that's where you get tons of people. Right. So I'll just put that place. down as a note, as a um, transfer station. Or the Glendale one. When that's open. Uh -huh. But I don't think they can quite as many. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on from Arbor Day. Uh, I had put preferred tree planting list on the um, 
uh, as basically a placeholder until this list is done. <laughs> until it is like in its final form and distributed to all parties, it's just going to stay on our agenda. This is my way of just nudge, nudge, nudging this project along. I did check in with Jen, and she said that she's not been able to meet with Alicia, but that it's her intention, and Alicia is going to help move it from this draft form to a pretty form. So um, that's the only update I can give you. Jen and Jay aren't here, so that's my vicarious update. But um, Rich, I am conscious that it's something that we were very eager to have yeah, it in be distributable helpful. form. It's been helpful with the, um, the uh, draft list and he was able to secure a bunch of plant material off of that list for not only the plant in the right way and the setback, but also planting inside this property as well. So he's going to have him or Sarah for good enough. By the way, did we as a commission ever officially vote on approving this draft plan? I don't remember that. Did we ever say, okay, this is the draft plan, we're all happy with it, we're voting that this is our official preferred tree planting list? I don't mean plan, I mean list. Um, no, I don't think so, because if you had, then I would be able to take them and send it to the planning board and ask them to revise their zoning, uh, their zoning requirements for the trees that they plant. I think we did vote on it because it wasn't the it's always been it's always been kind of okay so here's what i'm going to do at, at the next time we meet i'll ask jen and jay to bring just the, the raw content we'll review one more time we'll actually put it up to them okay can i say one more thing on the previous topic about florence sure. i just thought the florence business association has these certain i don't know if there's sidewalk sales or you know events like that several different times during the year and it seems like that might be a good time to um, just to co-tail with that. And do they ever have one around Arbor Day? It seems like it seems like they had one pretty recently in the spring. Well, if you want to look to into find it out and see if they have is. something yeah. around Arbor Day, I mean, it would yeah. be nice to tie it into that because we get this one delivery, right? You know, and then the trees just don't have much time when they can be mm -hmm. not in soil. I'll check. Okay, um, uh, next item on our agenda, I gave us 20 minutes to consider this. So I don't believe that we have done the kind of brainstorming exercise that we did about this time last year, actually I think we did it earlier in the year, about our priorities for the year. And what I'm realizing more and more as I sit on this commission is that thinking January to December isn't really as helpful as thinking fiscal year because that's how the money flows. And in some ways, it, it makes a lot of sense because we, you know, we can think about fall all the way through the next spring, which is kind of a natural way to think about planting rather than from, again, winter to winter. So I thought that we would just go through this exercise where from now on we kind of shift it where we do fiscal year planning. And, you know, and in some cases we can, you know, plan several years out and that, that kind of gets into one of my goals for fiscal year 2018. But, um, do folks like that idea about us looking at the fiscal year because that's, we know what our pot of money is, we can think about fall planting and then what we can't finish in the fall, spring planting. And since we didn't do it in January, then we're actually not behind. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually ahead. <laughs> Is our fiscal year July to June? It's June, uh, July yeah. 1st to June 30th, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the only problem that I would see with that is if you really need to have your, so the nursery stock that you want has to be, if you want to do a lot of different varieties of trees, you're going to need to have that list in, in a contract for the following growing season that way. So you can't necessarily, put, so you're going to have to have either money in the bank from the previous fiscal year to the fiscal year you're in, or you're going to have to take a leap of 
faith and hope that the money July 1st arrives. Well, I'm talking about the planning for the year, for the fiscal year. So, you, so you can, you can do the planning. But the only thing is that you have to you have to make sure that you secure. That's the funny thing about secure the nursery stock. Yeah. After you've decided what plan you're going to have, and then plug the holes with it, because the fiscal year money is in the actual. Uh, you, you can't. You, you couldn't say in December. I'm sorry. Uh, in July, say that we want to plant X, Y, and Z trees in the fall. I don't want to go that much in the weeds. When I talk about this kind of planning, you're Rich, talking I'm talking about out. zooming out. Okay. And in fact, you know, like one of my goals this year is to is to you know peel off a number of us to think about three, five, and 10 year plans. And, and, you know, and then when we have, like we start wrapping our brain around a three year plan, we can start thinking about, okay, after South Street, what are the two other major, air, you know, um, planting projects we wanna have over the next three years and, and start, you know, planning way ahead of them. So it's that sort of way zoomed out thinking. The in the weed stuff I think is ongoing and, you know, but in some ways, it allows us to at least go, this is the pot of money we have for this fiscal year, and these are the kind of things we need to think about in terms of using it. So. Okay. I would have loved to have had Jen and Jay here, but we, can, we don't have to make final decisions at this, at this meeting. We could you know, throw some things up on the board. In fact, if someone would like to be the volunteer to capture Brainstorm on the board. Everyone's looking at Marilyn because Marilyn's no. usually that. She's, she's <laughs> jumping at me. As soon as you said it, she was like, "Yeah, I like that." Like, yeah. um, and then, and then we can, you know, we can look at it in the minutes. We can have Jay and Jen react to it, and we can, like, you know, make our decision, final decision. So no major commitment. I, I subject to our own review as we go along with this thing's change. All we, I mean, yes. There's an expression, life is, uh, life is what happens in between making plans. Yeah. So plans are with the great intention, but they're, we do, we do our best to, to stick to our highest and most um, agreed upon priorities. And then obviously if, so, okay. Very drastic things come up that make it impossible to do that. But. So, so I don't think it's very drastic, but I just wanted to say that the, the, the planting of tree belts on, like we're doing in South Street, I think we're going to learn something from doing this. And that they, I'm actually not, Marilyn, that's no, not that how you're thinking. I'm not thinking that yet. I think right. that we will eventually get there, but All I'm right. not thinking that yet. So I, I think we might learn from this planting what the survival rate is under the very harsh conditions. and so. You know, I just don't want to like decide we're going to plant too many. Um, I think we we really stuck our neck out with the harsh conditions, and uh, yeah. So I just okay. say, so I'm not against what we're doing, but I'm just saying caution. So that to me is a is a part of a of a priority, which is to evaluate the plantings that we do. Yeah. Well, we're in particular, the South Street planting needs to be tracked carefully because the other plantings, although they're there are some trees that die, and generally they're doing well. So I'm just, South Street's the most challenging by far uh, setting for trees that we've all done. There's more salt and more sandy soil, mm -hmm. and uh, smaller, you know, just all together, a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. And so I know that if we're going to put up there that, oh, we want to plant other gateways, I'd, re I'd really like to have it be somewhat tentative before we go commit ourselves to planting more trees under the conditions that South Street's being planted. Okay. So that's just to throw in the mix. All right. So let's think about in terms of highest highest priorities, our goals for J July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. And, and these are goals all, all together, not just having to go with planting trees? Correct. Yeah. It's, it's our work as a tree commission. Right. Tree commission work. Which is, so, well, on, on the, I mean, the tracking and evaluating plantings, uh, that for me, that, that that's important. It's probably one of the last, other than change your tactic, is one of the last steps in a process that I'd like to see as a priority, which is to create a more formal structure for our planting priorities and procedures. 
uh, which gets to like you know Rich's point about the about you know the plan and us as a commission being involved in that that process kind of from start to end not necessarily to get into the weeds so to speak but to provide broad structure around kind of like we have done saying we wanted to tackle south street um, as a as a kind of big project um, but to formalize that process um, so that if we start with the goals and objectives we see a planting plan you know that informs a purchase list and then you know it gets planted we get and then we get to track and evaluate and learn from that and move on to the next cycle but having that kind of in, a, in an annual cycle of uh, structure for planting procedures and evaluation I think would be positive so we, we informally did what you're speaking of this year Right, but we could all be hit by a bus tomorrow, and I just want to make sure that you know we take a we formalize it to inform the work of future commissions, and also to provide you know kind of a foundation and a backstop you know for Rich and his people come after him, so that you know we can we can structuralize this and turn it into something that the city can rely on going forward. Right, we've laid down little pieces of the last Correct. the last meeting. We had the sixty forty thing yep. as part of it. Uh, right, so. Putting that all in a document that we can refer to, going, oh yeah, this is our guiding. This, this is our this is our guiding document for how to plan a planting project, like an annual planting project. <clears throat> I would like for a pri I, I have a number of priorities. Um, one is I would like us to move the um, the Davy Tree Report. 10 year plan to a working, to a more realistic three, five, and 10 year plan. Actually, their daily report is a five year plan. So to, I'd like it to, to move to working three, five. It's just your first word there is 10. Oh, yes. <clears throat> And actually, I would say one, three, five, and ten because I, 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 um, I want to make sure that we do we, we we carve out enough time, resources, and and staff priority to prioritize what they identify as our highest priority, which is removal of a ton of trees. So, so I want to make sure that we just keep all those pieces, you know, that we keep all those balls juggling in the air. That's what I was going to add is just now that we have this uh, done, the inventory, uh, some type of mechanism for, you know, checking off the inspection, removal, planting. We have a work order system. Yeah. And um, just, Todd, you're working on an overall manual to begin that generally to, in terms of the uh, requirements for zoning. And, and what's there going to be a trip up? How's that? Well, we were Jenny was talking about getting together and doing a, a basic tree related flow chart. We talked about that at the last meeting. Right. And she was going to be able to tackle that after semester ended in uh, mid May or whatever. Right. That flow chart seems really. Um, and that was going to be part of the manual. Rich suggested taking the tree species list that we were going to formalize hopefully soon, adding to it the tree related. Uh, the significant tree protection organs and right. Massachusetts ch MGL chapter, whatever, and then on top of it all having the flow chart, kind of decision tree forward, yeah. uh, tree-based permitting questions. Okay. So, you know, you have. Is there anything that we might want to do with Tree Northampton just to make sure we're continuing to be well integrated and work together? I, mean, yeah. I think it's gone well so far, but I don't know if that is something we want to add to our year. I I would like for us to um, really again zoom out and ask what are all the different ways that volunteers can be part of supporting a comprehensive tree management plan and make sure that 
were, you know, not leaning too heavily on Tree Northampton for supplying all that, not presuming that the, you can supply all of the, you know, provide us for all of those needs. Um, and if, if they're not able to, then what are some of our other plans? Yeah, I, I think uh, the way it looks at the moment, we're happy to help organize volunteers for the planting. And the second thing we'll probably work on is watering. And eventually, we may get to pruning. Well, we've started pruning. Well, well a little. But it has to, we don't have like a comprehensive plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. But I think in terms of direction, mm -hmm. those are the three areas. Fundraising maybe in five years, if we think that's an important part of our mission. But that's in play. I don't think we. So I'd love to just sure. look at that, you know, zoom in a little more closely. I, I, see, I think that once we identify what our priorities are this year, then we we identify who around the room wants to really zoom in on those topics um, and make sure that you know we we ask all the really hard questions i mean providing all the volunteers for planting there's many different aspects of that like are we talking about planting planting of days like events or are we talking about like neighborhood community building planting uh, you know operations or so there's different iterations of that, and I just don't want to make any presumptions. So I think it's a conversation, and I think it's an important one to have at some time this year. I'd love to see, especially because our last guest was the woman from um, the downtown. Um, TNA, downtown North Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Perhaps something uh, because that's such a, you know, this the center of of our city's um, business life to perhaps do something to, to get those folks more aware of what we're doing and providing feedback. Whether it's with how are those trees doing to, I don't know, it's, I think we've done a lot, but I'd love to see more of the downtown businesses and those folks um, more in the, the fold Yeah, I'm, I'm tr uh, trying to think of a concrete goal that could uh, sink in with that. But maybe that could, in the big scheme of things, maybe that could be an objective is to think about how we might interact with DNA. You should include the Florence group as well. Right. Yeah. So interaction with those two groups, any others that you just lump them all together, like how to interact? Chamber is a thought I had. Present at the chamber again. Right. So, all what, three of those. so I think what we're describing is like um, more outreach and, and collaboration with, with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a highest stakeholders, kind of. I'm thinking of outreach. I don't know if this would all be included already in the planting plan, but um, I'm intrigued with the idea of trying to promote, do more promotion of setback trees. I'm not sure what steps have already been taken to try to outreach to people to encourage them to do that, but maybe there's more ways we could um, try to um, get we, people to do that. We are working on all different kinds of ways, so to the extent that you can uh, maybe find out what we're doing yeah. and then join in. I mean, we've got like, you know, all kinds of. So Tree Northampton's doing that? All kinds of ways. Yeah. We've got Great. everything from like yard signs to door hangers to knocking on doors to right. Facebook to. So that's not, sites. sounds like it's not something that the Tree Commission would do, but that's well, something that Tree Northampton well, is already Well, the Tree Commission could find care. ways kind of up in that other stakeholders to more generally send out a message, which I think was done with my notice to the paper yeah. Yeah, where it mentions that you know what we're doing so it make people to raise awareness work the trainer and him doing it but i think the commission's joining in in different ways so maybe add the word um mm -hmm. maryland where you yeah. have increased 
setback tree planting, the next word should be awareness uh, okay. or promotion. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think they're doing plenty of setback tree planting, but but I you know we can talk about different ways of promoting it. Okay. Uh, a lot of which are already being right. done, and I can think of a couple of more. I don't think it'll, you know, do all that much more than what you're already doing. But well, you've got it in the paper, which I think. Yeah, and we could that. we could do it again. We could get a you know a, a setback recipient to write a letter to the editor or whatever. You know, there's exactly. lots of different things. How about you know, Hampton Community Television producing a video of some of the tree plantings? or just, you know, doing a YouTube channel uh, so that people can see what we're about. Well, we have under setback tree planting promotion, so those things, yeah. there is room, yeah. there, there's definitely room. And each one of these, we don't necessarily have to drill down into. We're just trying to keep really high level bird's eye view right now. Um, yeah, I was wondering if there's anything more that we want to do with printed materials, whether it was signage around trees planted or, mm. I know at one point last year, or maybe our first year, we talked about oh, putting little tags on trees. Oh yeah. People walk by like, oh, what kind of that trees? Is they have those tags that say how much CO2 every, that particular tree sucks up every year. Yeah, like planted by Tree Northampton or Public Trade, Tree, tree Commission, what kind of tree it is what it's doing for the environment. Rich and Alicia have been working on yeah. a yard sign. Yard sign. Let's say this tree was, I think the wording, paid for by the city of Northampton and planted by citizen volunteers. Yeah. I would like us to look very carefully about <laughs> ways in which we can support I, I don't want to put more work on your plate, Rich, than you already have, but I would like to support a strengthened role of the tree warden vis-a-vis -vis public, tre public shade trees that are not narrowly in the public right way. And I think about, and Rich knows how personally upset I am about the oak tree behind the Academy of Music that was recently um, you know, subject to just probably catastrophic damage yeah. from the asphalt paving around it. It's a public shade tree that happens to not be on the right of way. So R Rich's domain is limited. Um, it's, it's, I, I believe that with some um, internal conversations among departments, maybe we can expand the notion of what Rich's domain is. Rich's domain, as defined by Mass General Law 87, that's just the minimum of what his domain could be. But there's no reason why his domain couldn't be broader if the city wanted it to be. So example would be the parking lot with all the dying. Uh, lemon plane trees. So maybe just for to put down an example. Okay. Uh, so I I, I I feel very strongly that our tree warden should be protecting all of our public shade trees, and I think it's ridiculous that one of our very own and finest downtown specimens is not even being held right. to the significant tree ordinance, you know, specifications. I mean, to me, that just feels like if anyone wanted to just call us, you hypocrites, like this would be a great example. So I, and instead of like asking, because it's done, the damage is done, of what happened in this case, I would much rather just the broader conversation of can we, can we empower our tree warden to have more purview? There's a lot of trees, schools. And I know. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to think how we'll broad Where is the housing authority? Housing yeah. authority. I don't know yet. This is a conversation we need to have. Right. Um, and I don't necessarily have all the answers. All I know is like I see this example of something that went really wrong in my mind and I want to write it. And he, you know, you are, you know, he's like, um, he's our dude. Like you're the, only, you're the only one that has, that will, in, among any of us, that could have the authority to, to not let something like that happen. So I, you know, I don't know, I don't know yet who, you know, who we have this conversation with, but I know that what happened wasn't right and we can't, we can't afford to let, 
you know, a tree that took a hundred years to establish itself go that quickly? Well, I think it gets, it's not like we didn't tell people that this was going to happen. I mean, this gets back to the meeting that we had with the mayor and other department heads around the lack of internal coordination for, for projects, both private and public. So it's a completely foreseeable issue because, you know, a draft, because there's no internal, or there's holes in the internal procedures that uh, fails to include the tree warden at a point in the process where the tree warden can recommend changes to the design and construction schedule right. to protect a public asset. So that's the whole. It, that is, but but until he has the power right. to say stop, yeah. um, uh, you know they can just keep going in circles. And so I feel like we need to um, up his really specific domain in over public shade trees. I just want a badge. <laughs> What did you say? Sheriff badge? Badge. A badge of some sort. Badge. Bad ombre? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Going along with that, um, might we want to try to increase our line item in the city budget? Why don't we have 40000 a year now? That's for tree planting, but the whole overall budget is uh, a few hundred. Than that. It went up to fifty thousand, right? No, I don't believe it went up to fifty. Oh, we did. No, I think we're still at forty. I'm just saying that the budget is the tree, the tree budget is hundreds of thousands because it includes the staff and all. Yeah. yeah. When we met with the mayor, mm -hmm. what the mayor said is it's it's a lot easier to add capital costs into a budget than operational staffing costs. So. I think we've got to be thinking about like creative workarounds, and you know I, um, you know kind of to that point, Rich, the the money that we um, lament not spending in this fiscal year, like continually create uh, being creative, like for example, could some of that money go to hiring contractors to do some of the tree removal? That would be capital, so that would not. Transfer, you have to transfer it to somewhere, but you can't use it out of that line item as it sits. Okay. And you have that people supervise the contractors. So if people, my people are supervising contractors and they're not working on themselves. That's a problem. Okay. That's, a, that's, a, that's getting in the weeds. Yeah, that's, that is. That's yeah. a bigger conversation. Okay. All right. But yes, I'm sure you could. You could do it, but you'd have to transfer the money. Mm -hmm. Just trying to think of creative ways of using the money so that we don't give it back. Oh, it'll be used. I'm buying another water tank with it. Okay. And things of that nature. Don't worry about it. I've been at this game for a while, mm -hmm. so I don't give anything back. We'll spend the tree materials. Good. Good. Glad to hear. All right. Any other priorities for this coming fiscal year? Did we want to try to increase the involvement of the high school students? Because we were pleased with that already. Or just keep that as an arbitrary focus. You know, the, we've made her attempts to include high school students, and we need to think about them and uh, re, re, re try again. It's not, it's not all been smooth. I mean, it's been great the volunteers we've had, but they, they just fear it. It's you know, a little bit of a new spot of work now. Um. But you made me think of another thing, and that is maybe consider start considering a little bit earlier Arbor Day 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, and maybe calling it Arbor Week or something like that, from Earth Day to Arbor Day, and um, maybe just be a little ambitious, a little bit more ambitious than we were this year. Mm -hmm. I think we are more efficient this year, and I think that's really good. I want us to be efficient, like the clustered planting and uh, all, you know, one day, uh, one week before. But <clears throat> I think we could do, uh, we could add a few more things to, you know, to it. Um, another idea, I don't know if you guys have already done this, but the idea of um, preemptive planning for pest infestations, is that something that we should focus on? You were going to, remember? I know, I was. Yeah. So, right, Molly Froelicher sent something. Oh, this was the emergency, uh, what to do, right. uh, reaction plan. So I'm just putting it on a list of things to, yeah. you know, to I still do. Putting up on there, have a reaction plan would be 
Yeah, and that, remember, some that of these reason? can go into a, in fact, all of this kind of fits under the five-year, like rewriting the five-year plan into a one, three, five, and ten-year plan. Well, I, I was actually talking about something else. I, I was talking about, I thought it was reaction if they show up so we have from day one. If, if we spot a, a particular insect, is that? Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's well, um, whether it's in the plan or not, it's sort right. of a piece. It could be a piece of the plan or it could just be a yeah. thing yeah. on its yeah. own. But Molly sent an actual, like a plan. Oh, she did? Yeah, and, oh. and I have it. Molly Freilisher sent it to Molly uh, Hale. So we have right. Molly so we have Hale I, is going yeah. to read it and report back to us. Right, right. which I was going to do and then I forgot. So okay. now I will. Do the other it. thing I'd like to add, if people are interested, is we had talked uh, about East Hampton maybe getting started, and I was wondering, is there any way that we want to become more of a regional effort? Amherst, Northampton, East Hampton, anybody else? It's great totally. that the cities are doing it, but do we want anything? It's a, it's a big it's, it's a big chunk to bite off. Yeah. Uh, I went and met with the East Hampton City Planner along with um, a couple citizens. Yeah. And they're, they've got a long way to go. Okay. We definitely, you know, through, provided some documents, sent them in the right direction, but there's got to be some citizen push mm -hmm. for that to happen. So, isn't that probably what Molly does? Yeah, Molly yeah. was Molly was at the meeting. Yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, so now that we, I, I, you know, we don't necessarily need to, this doesn't have to need to be all comprehensive and finished because we'll revisit this next time we meet. But I'll take a photo and uh, send it around. Oh, that's a good yeah. idea. But wait a minute. Uh, before we do, we just have a few more minutes. Actually, we don't, do we? Um, I would just wanted us to think about the resources required to meet these priorities and, and then start slashing the ones we're like, we don't have the capacity to do that. And this is not our highest priority given, you know, vis-a-vis -vis all the other priorities we have. So, um, does anyone feel strongly about, like, I, well, do people want to take a moment and then just, and like, put a mark by the one, by the one that they, the three that they feel most strongly about? Okay. Sure. All right. Why don't you just put a tick mark, and then everyone can has has three tick marks. Okay. If you feel like most strongly about one, you could put three tick marks outside one. It's a little tricky because some of them could be part of oh, the five-year plan. So maybe we leave off five-year plan. Let's assume that's the biggest Let's plan. assume we're going to do five-year <laughs> plan and not tick that one, but tick the other ones that yeah, might be. already started, which makes it yeah, super special. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everyone feels Five-year plan is essentially digest the data report okay. in a realistic uh, state, state before you can public in five years. Yeah, turn it into more realistic. Yeah. Yeah, and not in five years, in like one, three, five, and ten. Like, right. and and this would not be a one or two people think about this alone. One or two people can help the group go through the process of coming of chunking it out. All right. So we have eleven others. Everybody put. A mark, three marks next to their top three. Okay. There's plenty of markers here. Mm -hmm. How many do we get? Three? Three. On the left or the right? Do it near her. Do the at marks. Yes. Does Rich get the play? No. <laughs> playing video games. Yep. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. 
Do you want to take a picture? Yeah, um, I think Marilyn said she would. You want to take a photo? Share it with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I have to say, I felt a little arbitrary about doing it. I think we're kind of doing them all one way or another, a little bit yeah. at a time, anyway. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I think, I think identifying what you want to spend most of your time yeah. on is very valuable. Yeah. So I'll, I'll nice. find that with most of your time. Yeah. I guess because a lot of these things are, are going to be being done. So wait a minute. Are you, you're a circle and everything. Can you just put a line so we'll just count ticks? What? Oh, oh she's on the ticks. That's oh, right. oh, I'm sorry. She's I thought the ones for the highest ticks. Oh, okay. My apologies. I didn't understand what you were doing. The highest ticks. Family plan, flow chart, and expenditures that we Okay. Someone's going to take a photograph of this. Yes, I will. Yeah. Awesome. And did you still want to do, do this next? No. Later. Okay. Okay. Good. Good start. Um, Marilyn, yes. can you photograph this? Can you then... Um, I'll, I'll type it out. Or, or just send the photo to Jane and Jen. Whatever. I mean, if you um, yes. Me. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have Jan Jan. We pretty much um, chimed in, did chimed in for Arbor Day and addressed all of that. I will add in, in conjunction with what Susan was saying earlier, our long range goals, as I talked to a number of people about this and maybe said it before, is to develop the leadership for tree planting leaders. That's kind of the biggest, well, it is the biggest challenge when we're going to have this big planting day coming up. We need people there who are um, knowledgeable to lead volunteers and then a hierarchy of volunteers who are also experienced rather than having one-time volunteer opportunities, building up a group of volunteers with knowledge, no rules, no how things work. So um, we just add that in for planning from our point of view. And um, getting ready to get out the word on finding volunteers for the South Street project. It's we're going to need, of course, quite a few volunteer leaders. I um, need to communicate with Rich and fine tune the times. Going around here, I heard a few people say their availability, but if I'll just end with asking, mm -hmm. um, what commissioners' availability are for the twentieth and the twenty. 20th, 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 raise your hands. Who's I have a around? workshop that day, but I don't remember what hours it is. Um, so okay. it's at least in the morning through lunch. I'm not sure if it's for the whole day. Possibly so. PM yeah. on 20th. Right. Anyone else? Either the 20th or the 27th. I'm going to be involved around. So I can do eight to 10. And after that, I have to make corsages for 12 hours straight. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> We do an entire graduation. Prom. Yeah, oh, no, it's prom. an entire Williston prom. Takes all day. Uh, Marilyn, no, yeah, I just looked at my schedule. I work on weekends, but um, I I could possibly do some morning stuff on the twentieth. Before I'm getting possibly. Yep. A.M. Lily, you're out of town. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm busy all of the twentieth. The twenty seventh, I can do after say ten a.m. I can right. also, if you end up, um, you know, because I'm I'm a trained tree planter and, and experienced, I I could and I live off of South Street. I could just be available to plant trees as needed on on the non non Saturday days. Okay, great. You know, Saturday in general are bad days for you. Um, no, it's just that uh, I I just meant that we don't have you don't ha I don't have to be restricted to those two days right. because I'm so close and you know and I I can plan to for you know setbacks when we get into for setbacks or or small for trees planting. whatever yeah but yeah just keep me on hand for yeah, anything around great. South Street Thank because you. it's right I'm very close yeah if you 
run, run, fall over neighbors who want to help shuffle yeah. them towards soup. Well, I'd be happy to put a word out on the South Street listserv. I mean, that goes without saying. Oh, that would be terrific, Lily. Yeah. Um, so I'll finish crafting so we'll the, be in touch the word, wording once I talk to Rich on the actual yeah. report times and some of those little details, what we want to do, how many shifts we want to do. He was talking about eight hours, but when we really work out the logistics, we'll see how many people we want. Yeah, I think, I think the thought is that the tree crew was going to be up for eight hours, but the volunteers will, will come in the morning or afternoon. Okay, two sets of volunteers mm -hmm. and what times work. Yeah. Get that text to okay. you if you uh, post it on South Street. That would be fantastic. Sure. sure. And that's it. Great. Do you have all the tools you need? Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. That's, so that's it for you guys in terms of your whole report. Okay, good. Uh, any other business not anticipated by the chair? There was something you were going to say earlier. No, I did. I did get to it. Yeah, I got to it. Um, I think we're in our to do. I have not to say anything. Mm. I want to show you something. That we are not the first people to do variable plantings in this city. I found these pictures in an old file cabinet many years ago. And I kept them because I wanted to keep the records of the DPW. But here's a picture of uh, five DPW employees doing a variable planting on the Sycamore in 1966. Oh. So I'm going to pass these around while Maryland's going to do this. Do you know where the sycamore is? It's still there. It's the Springbrook oh. Cemetery. You know, oh. I remember reading that in, at the um, Cornell, you know, the, Cor the Cornell um, urban tree planting, th that <laughs> it's a very old technique that is just finally kind of coming yeah. back into, like the people who knew, knew trees back in the day knew that this was the best way to transform. So I, that's very cool. I did one, a nine foot tree with spring. So they're kind of similar to what we did with the linden tree. I'm oh, sorry, the tulip tree. Yeah. The tulip tree on uh, Cottage Street. Is that the one near uh, the park? Yes. Hey, How right. is it doing? It's blooming. And you brought that to, to bare roots? It was, it had very little soil on it. And Jay and I root pruned it uh, almost six months prior to moving it. And then we had it root pruned it again. And then we moved it and made it through the winter. Okay. So we mulched it, we got a couple of water bags zipped around it, so no offense to sun moisture. But hopefully it'll do well and we cut the other tree down in front of it that was out on the street that was got garbage and orange maple that was all had tons of dieback and stuff like the six of <laughs> but what? That was like the sixties. Yeah, so like the old coat of coat of chrome. I love it. <laughs> White wow. around. Wow. It's a big bit of root. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where they got it from, but that tree's still there. Hmm. It's right opposite the fountain. Yeah, it's a good one for it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's opposite the fountain? Where? That's Spring Grove Cemetery, if you drive in there. There's a big American, a big American elm. Oh. It's, okay. it's been there since yeah. like 1900. It's like a oh. day death from a photo. Uh, that was, that was, yeah. that, was yeah. that American elm was put there. That was probably from when the cemetery was built in the 1870s. So, oh some real photos. And there's other photos I have of us doing tree, the, the department doing tree work on, Amer <coughs> on American <coughs> elms, just doing tree poles with cotton, with cotton trees. So, it's kind of so mm -hmm. I just find it to be it's interesting that you know it's there's snapshots in time in the city where we actually have done a lot of tree work. Yeah. Um, and we've always done tree work, but we always have not necessarily been good about you know, keeping, records. keeping records and replanting trees in a sense. So, but, but there's not there's not a really good record of all the work we've ever done. So these photographs I thought were kind of priceless. Did you say where it came from or like how they got? I mean, it's like a 12 foot root ball. If I had known, if I found those pictures 15 years ago, that 10 years ago, I could have asked one of the men in the picture. But all they're, they're all passed away. Oh, now. Oh. Uh, Don Goodyear worked here from, uh, for like 42 years. And when I came here as a young man, he was a in the highway division. Is he the father of the Goodyear who has the Texaco in Florence? Uh, related cousin. Oh. 
Rob just suggested we scan those and put them on the True North Hampton website. Oh, that's a good idea. We have a gallery of setbacks. Yep. That People should check out. Well, I would also encourage you. I have some great, pretty cool pictures of the way Northampton used to look with, you know, Are you getting ready to take Elm, a picture? Let's move. Yeah. That is very inspiring to people. When they see it, they go, gosh, that was beautiful. If they have no memory of mm -hmm. Northampton being like that, but when yeah. they see the mm -hmm. old time photographs, it's very inspiring. And so I would recommend those kind of. I, and I have a number of them that I worked with a, for, a Forbes librarian to uncover. You did? Yeah. And his Was there a cultural project that you worked on at some point? I you know, I just sidled up to a, a librarian who loves trees, and he helped me find them. Oh, great. There's um, one that I have in my memory, I don't know where I saw, maybe on Florence City's Bank calendar, with the trees in front of Forest Library when they are very young. Yeah. I've have seen you seen that one? Oh, yeah. I wanted mm -hmm. to find Yeah, that. 1907 or something. Mm -hmm. Down the road, we yeah. love to do it, more with our galleries, yeah. the story of the trees, and the DPW, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. the people have cared a long I can, time I about I can trees. send you the ones that I have, if you like. They're, they're in a PowerPoint. One other thing on other business, is anybody going to the annual Arbor Day meeting in June? It's in Arlington this year. Oh, yeah, it's for Tree City USA? It's Tree City yeah. USA. Yes. Oh, it's Tree City USA. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I have it on my calendar. Yeah, if you would like to go, let me know because I have to reserve our seats. Uh, it's our tenth year. Seven. It's our tenth year. One two three. Tree City USA, and and it's our first year of getting a Pro Award. Yeah, I like to go anyway. Can I reserve a seat? Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's a little awkward, Rich, because well, we'll have to. Ch I think we'll have to cancel our tree commission meeting that day because it's one to three thirty, and our tree commission meetings are usually. Oh, so I think we'll have to just mm -hmm. work around it. It's, we can plan for That's it. fine. Yeah. That's fine. We can just leave early. I'll just. We have to leave early. Where is it? Um, yeah. Well, we what? It's the after party? It's not the way that I drive. It's at one. We're not going to leave at two. Yeah. We're not going to go all that way and leave an hour later. <laughs> Because because there's really interesting lectures. I learn a lot there. Maybe it's all. Yeah, but that but that's not the lecture part. The lecture part is in the morning. The afternoons when they give the award. Mm -hmm. oh. So if we if we are if they move if there's a lot of people that don't show up, we can beat feet quickly. I'm telling you, I don't know. He's fast. He's been there. Yeah, done a lot that. to do. All right. That's well, so anyway, we can work it out. Um, does anyone else have business that they wish? that we have had on the agenda. Okay, then we're gonna wrap up, Marilyn. Okay, here we go. If I miss anything, let me know. Uh, Rich, I have you working with Rob in Tree Northampton to prepare for the May 20th tree planting on South Street um, and reserving seats for Tree City meeting on June 7th. Uh, Jay and Jen, I have preparing the pre preferred tree planting list to be voted on by the commission next meeting. Uh, and Jen's going to work with Alicia to finalize that. Um, I'm going to send the commissioners, uh, I'll, I'll, I photograph this and I'll send you uh, a document. Uh, Molly's going to work with Molly on the pest list. It's just an email she sent me. I'm going to oh, okay. read over what she sent me. Okay. Uh, that's all I captured. Did, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. Next meeting is May 17th. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Adjourn. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Aye.